time the 6 p.m. Council of the City of Denison now convenes into regular session. Tonight's invitation will be given by Dave Pettigrew, Pastor of the Denison Avenue. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and your many blessings. We want to pray for each one who's gathered here. We pray for the business that will be conducted tonight. We pray for the safety of the leaders in our community and our world situation today. We pray that when we leave here this evening, we'll be better citizens, Lord, in your kingdom and in this community. We want to be very careful to give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have a proclamation this evening. Um, we've designated today as Lindsay Looney Day in the city of Denison. So, Lindsay, if you would come forward with your family. I know we've got <laughs> trying to hide out back there. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Welcome. Glad that you're here. And really, just today's a great opportunity for, for the city of Denison to, to honor to you and all the work as you went to the Olympic trials and and also your, your brother. We've got good genes in the Looney family. <laughs> also was a uh, uh, representative of Denison in the state uh, 5A division state championship. So with that, we'll give this proclamation. Whereas Lindsay Looney is a native of the city of Denison, Texas. And whereas earlier this year, Lindsay Looney won the gold medal of the UIL's Texas State Swim Meet, the first swimming medal in Denison history. And whereas last year, Lindsay Looney qualified for the Olympic trials in the 200 meter butterfly and the 400 individual medley when she was only 13 years old. And whereas in June 2016, the best swimmers in the United States, including former Olympians, gathered at the Olympic trials in Omaha, Nebraska. And she was among one of them competing in the 400, 400 individual medley and the 200 meter butterfly. And whereas 103 swimmers competed in the 200 meter butterfly, Lindsay Looney was the youngest of all of them at the age of 14. And whereas Lindsay Looney placed 36 overall in the women's 400 individual medley with a time of 4 minutes 52 seconds and 78 hundredths, which I've since learned that's important. <laughs> and was 46th overall in the 200 meter butterfly with a time of 2 minutes 15 seconds and 63 hundredths. And whereas the city of Denison is proud of Lindsay's swimming accomplishments and wishes to commend her on representing her school and our community with honor, integrity, and skill. Now, therefore, I, Jared Johnson, as mayor of the city of Denison, on behalf of all the citizens of Denison, Texas, do hereby proclaim August 1st, 2016, as Lindsay Looney Day in the city of Denison. <laughs> Consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the consent agenda as written. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Gott, second Councilman Malvern. All better but say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Agenda item 4A, public hearing, 1513, 1515 South of Armstrong. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight, for your review, is a um, zone change from commercial to commercial with conditional use permit. Property address is 1513 1515 South Armstrong. Uh, applicant is Mr. Jason Earnhardt. Proposed use is to 
uh, allow a, an existing tire shop has expressed an interest in doing some minor automotive repair, which is outlined in the, the CUP. Um, the applicant's also proposing building a, a metal building for warehouse and storage purposes. Planning and Zoning Commission recommended the zone change unanimously with, with an approval, and with that, I recommend opening the public hearing. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to this agenda item? There being none, the public hearing is closed. I will uh, acknowledge that Jason Earnhardt is here if the council has any questions. Motion? Uh, I've already closed the public hearing. So, motion from council? Sorry. I have a motion from Councilman Malvern, second Councilman Brawley. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign. Motion carries. Agenda item 4B um, Unsafe structures. Ms. Boyd. Morgan and on May 5th 2016 Michael Gentry and Kenneth Holder were given notice of violation to repair and demolish the structure. They failed to comply and the structure is unsafe and a fire hazard. As you see it's about to go. A record of the violations, notices, and unsafe condition of the property are on file in the building department. Okay, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to this property? There being none, the public hearing is closed. Motion to the council. No motion. Make motion to approve. Second. Motion from Councilman Hanley, second from Councilman Brigada. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries agenda item 4C, public hearing on unsafe structure 1101 West Chestnut. On May 9th, uh, 2016, Richard Matthews and Jarhan Investments LLC were given notice to repair and demolish this structure. The owners have failed to comply with the notice. This structure is unsafe and a potential fire hazard. This is a garage apartment behind 1101 West Chestnut. This is the Tone Avenue side of it. And this is just another shot from Tone. This is the rear part, portion of it faces Main Street. You can see that the roof is caving in on this one. A record of the violations, notices, and unsafe conditions of the property are on file in the building department. Okay, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to this property? There being none, the public hearing is closed. Questions from council? A motion? Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion from Councilman Brawley. Second. Councilman Malvern. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Opposed uh, like sign. Motion carries. Agenda item 4D. Public hearing on unsafe structure. Ms. Boyd. I'm sorry, 731 East Chestnut. Ms. Boyd. This one, um, I'm going to remove it from this council meeting. Uh, this is it's just a storage building on a vacant lot. We tore the house down several years ago, but uh, and it belongs to the county. But someone has purchased it recently, and they've not been notified. So. I think that uh, we need to pull it, notify them, and keep it. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to that agenda? There being none, the public hearing is closed. Uh, what's the appropriate motion, Councilor? You just take the action. Okay. Any motion from Council? Being none, the staff's <laughs> recommendation was no action, and that's what we'll take. Agenda item 4E. Um, Imposing a lien on special assessment of lien for demolition costs at the McDonald Hospital. Right. Yes, sir. Mayor and Council, uh, as you know, the old Madonna Hospital property was demolished in April of this year. Uh, this is a part of the procedure to 
assess the, the lien for the cost of demolition. Um, total cost is seventy five thousand nine hundred sixty dollars. The current property owner has expressed an interest in redeveloping the property in single family homes. So we are proposing that this total amount be broken up um, per lot. She replanted the property. There'll be fourteen single family lots. It works out to about fifty four hundred dollars per lot. So with that, I recommend. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to this agenda item? There being none, public hearing is closed. Motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. Got the motion. Councilman Hanley, second. Councilman Rogat, all in favor by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Agenda item 5A, readopting the Youth Advisory Council. Ms. Jones. Um, staff is proposing the idea for the Draft Youth Advisory Commission. We have inactivated it several years ago, and so we're proposing that it be brought back. Um, some of the major changes in the ordinance that we're proposing is the number of members. It used to be 20. We're going to drop that down to 15, which is a more manageable number. Um, it will be open to anybody who resides within the DISD city <coughs> boundaries. Um, so that will involve if there's a private school and homeschool children between the ages of 14 and 18. Those are, instead of having them school specific for a certain number of students in each school, which is how it was pre previously written, we have reached out to Dr. Scott and he is in support of the commission being reactivated and will help to get the word out to students when school starts again. Um, so, if you have any questions, let's go. Questions for council? I think it's great. Anything we can do to get to get kids involved, our, our young folks today, get them involved in understanding, you know, civics and, you know, and what it is to be a, 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 a contributing citizen to their their community. I think it's a great opportunity, and I hope that we'll come back. You know, if if, if it's approved, hope we come back and do try to expand it back to twenty. I, I think there's there's certainly a, a need for that. So anyway, good program. And, and I, I will say when we did this the first time, I think the, the architect of this was Councilman Malvern during his first time on the council as a program that he had heard about at TML, right? Right. Being done in, in a few other cities and he brought it back here as something that he's been, been passionate about. I think we saw some, some real fruits of the efforts from the last time according to, to him. So right. thank you, Councilman Malvern, for your persistence on that. I have a motion to approve this. Second. I have a motion to Councilman Hamlet. Second to Councilman Malvin. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by the sign. Motion carries. Agenda item 5B. Uh, we're going to report on the 2017 budget. Mr. Rex. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, here to just give a brief update on the budget preparation. Uh, we have made some progress since our last update, specifically on property valuations, uh, which are, are now finalized. and and we're ready to move forward with those. So uh, one of the considerations tonight is that um, still, while still preliminary, we feel comfortable recommending a one cent decrease in our, in our property tax rate. Uh, there's still a few variables that are, that are hanging out there budget-wise. One of those is our health insurance. And while the city's cost uh, is, is gonna stay the same at the 458 per month per employee, uh, we're still working with our benefits consultants <coughs> manage that number and, and see what that looks like for our employees. So that's that's going to continue some negotiations here in the coming weeks. Um, at the next council meeting, we'll have a significant update on our street program for next year. And so that'll that's one thing that continues to evolve. And uh, we want to welcome our new public works director, Bobby Atterbury, here tonight, who's going to be um, helping shape that over the next couple of weeks and review the work that we've done to date and, and should help us greatly on that progress. Uh, finally, our, our personnel costs. Uh, we are recommending for this for this upcoming fiscal year a 2% cost of living adjustment for our employees. Um, that would be effective January 1st of, of 2017. Um, also, as, as council is aware, we did a classification and compensation plan um, update and, and salary survey along with that and, and are recommending some, some changes to our, our ranges for some of the positions, particularly those where we see higher turnover and, are, and difficulty in recruiting and retaining employees. 
uh, most of those positions that we're looking at changing and adjusting that market rate is, is within our public works department in equipment operators and uh, utility workers, maintenance workers. Uh, so that won't affect the full organization, but that's where we feel the, uh, the, the funds are needed best to bring folks uh, closer to the market and, and help us retain uh, the best talent that we can. Um, the capital equipment recommendations are included in the fund balances which, which follow here. And really these have only changed in the general fund and, and water and sewer fund general fund. Uh, you'll notice that we are showing a positive um, a positive balance so far that would bump us up to 70 days of reserve. Uh, right now we're to the good about $27,000 and that includes the 2% cost of living and the other salary adjustments. Uh, utility fund is slightly to the negative so uh, we hope to refine these numbers over the next couple of budget meetings and, and be <coughs> Uh, we're pretty close, but uh, and still certainly within our, our days of reserve, which are um, the council has set forth in the policy. In terms of rainy day fund and, and the others, these haven't changed. Um, still proposing the, the same projects that were in in the last uh, budget presentation, and I have summarized those kind of on our um, significant expenses slide, and uh, we'll be scheduling meetings to sit down with the council and, and give you an opportunity to ask any, any further questions on the budget over the next couple of weeks. So I look forward to that. And uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any, any questions you might have. Questions for the manager? <coughs> I, I do just, just want to want to say that, that, that this budget process, again, can, continues to go great. Renee, thank you for, and your staff for or the work that you do on that. Um, as the manager mentioned, we're able to, or he's able to, to have a, a proposal that has a one cent property tax reduction. And that, I think, better symbolizes a, a lot of things that, that's come into culmination in this budget. One is a lot of hard work by our staff, by the city staff to, to be efficient and be good stewards with, with the taxpayer dollars. Um, it's been many years of hard work to get to that point. It's also a recognition of, of previous, previous councils um, and, and, and their stewardship of, of year by year chomping at being, being the best planners that we can be, the best visionaries we can be for this community. For DDA, and the efforts as they grow our tax base and both that board and that staff for, for what they do to, to grow our tax base that gets us to the point. And, 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 and people say, well, you know, one cent is not meaningful. I think we would all recognize that, that if you compare our tax rate to other communities, we would like to, to be able to lower it to 10 cents or over time. We will never get to 10 cents unless we get to one cent first. And, and we've not, as our, as our sales tax revenues and our property tax revenues have grown over the last several years because of all the work of all of those people, um, we weren't able to cut taxes simply because prior to that we were not adequately funding essential city services. We weren't, we didn't have enough police officers, we didn't have enough CDL drivers, we didn't have enough money going into streets. And, and through this budget, through those planning, through those years, we've been able to chip away at some of the, the areas where we need to, to improve. We certainly have not arrived. We have a lot of opportunity ahead, and, and streets remain a, a huge focus for this council. So Bobby, welcome to the team and, and helping that. But as we saw in the budget retreat, we've got ways that we're identifying new revenue streams for that. And I think it's going to be prudent upon the council as that program rolls out and we see future years of growth from tax revenue to make sure that we continue to fund those programs at the levels that they, that they need to be, be done for sure. So again, kudos to the entire council, the staff, and, and all those that I mentioned because it's been multiple years in the making to be able to, to get our, our financial house in order. So thank you, staff. Other questions, comments from council? So that, uh, gentlemen's our next update? Uh, August 15th. August 15th. Okay, very good. Then item 5C, 
public hearings or calling public hearings for increase in tax revenue, which is different than increase in tax rate. Ms. Wagner. Correct. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council. Yes, we're here tonight. We're bringing you a resolution. We're asking for approval that takes a vote on calling public hearings for an increase in tax revenue. Um, the Truth in Taxation rules mandate the governmental unit publish a proposed tax rate and also hold two public hearings on a tax revenue increase. If the proposed rate exceeds the rollback rate or the effective rate, whichever is lower, the taxing unit's governing body must vote to place a proposal to adopt, to adopt that rate on a future meeting agenda as an action item. There must be a recorded vote, which is what we're doing this evening. The dates of the public hearings must be stated and notices must be published. The proposed rate for the 2016 tax year is 0.643377, a penny lower than the last four years. This exceeds the lower of the rollback rate or the effective rate, therefore requiring this action. Notices will be posted and public hearings will be held on August 15, 2016 and September 6, 2016 at 6 p.m. in this building. Adoption of the tax rate will be September 12, 2016 at a special call meeting at noon. Um, staff recommends approving this resolution and calling for public hearings to increase this tax revenue. The 0.643377 will increase our tax revenue over last year by about $450,000. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to call the public hearings. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion from Councilman Regatte, second from Councilman Spiegel. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries. The council now go into executive session to chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code to talk about contemplated litigation and also talk about uh, review of the city manager. Time is 622.